I don't know if you know this, but Rust is stopping your success. UC++. That's all the title says, okay? And it's by a man named Chad. I mean, the man's name is practically Robert Swellington. Uh, this is going to be exciting. I'm very excited for this. I will say one quick thing at the very tippity top of this. I haven't really used C++ beyond C++11 because that's what our compiler has been largely stuck at. And so that's all I've really ever known. I know C++ gets a lot better. I know I'm here's here's to me hoping that modules really actually will one day work <sighs> feels like copium here we go here we go all right by the way oh look at that poor crab look at the poor crab uh programming languages are tools not religions yes uh, I don't know if you know this but the term religion I believe comes from the French term religion religion which actually comes from the uh Latin term a religari which means to hold on to it uh, invokes an idea of you being on a ship. Uh, people, this was actually a common term before it became a term for what you believe in. But you would re uh, really gari a rope while you are on rough seas, right? Just a fun little fact. You would hodl a rope, okay? And so this was very, very important uh, understanding. So our programming tools, something you, f you grasp onto in the wavy seas. Well, I mean, one could, one could see a bit of a connection there. You know, one could see a bit of a connection. Maybe that's why it's so deep, so difficult, so backdoor wanging. You know, unfortunately, you can't use jokes from other videos because backdoor wang means nothing here. Sorry. If you don't know FTX, you don't know backdoor wang. Uh, anyways, sure, Rust has its merit. A memory safety without garbage collection, yada, yada, yada. But let's talk about getting actual market-ready products out the back door. That's where languages like C++ and C Sharp shine. The borrow checker. A double-edged sword. Ah, this, okay. This actually could be a great take. I actually could really like this take. Okay, let's see it. Ah, the borrow checker. Russ claimed to fame. It's like the overly cautious friend who won't let you climb a tree because you might fall and break a leg. It's supposed to help you by enforcing strict rules to avoid common pitfalls, but in practice, it often feels like you're wrestling with it just to get your code to compile. And every minute you spend doing that is a minute not spent developing features, fixing other kind of bugs, or literally or doing literally anything else productive. Okay, so I, I guess I have a slightly different take on that one. I, like, in some sense, I understand what he's trying to say. But there's kind of like the classic understanding of 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 Rust, which is no, I want to I want to I want to text way up here, which is all safe programs, and then there's Rust allowed programs, right? This is kind of like the the notion. Oopsies, the the, the notion that you kind of have to have in your head when you're using Rust, which means that if you design a program that is safe, but as you program it, it's not Rust safe you therefore are going to fall into this really big fight with your compiler even though you're doing a safe thing and i think this is where most people's big gripe with rust comes from is not the fact that they want to write safe programs it's that their program which is safe cannot be uh expressed in rust and i think that that can be very 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 annoying it be very annoying. And yes, yeah, someone just said, if you're fighting with the brow checker, you don't know Rust. No, that's not true at all. Do any sufficiently sized program and you will start fighting with the borrow checker at some point, right? Uh, you don't fight with the borrow checker uh, if you write it in the Rust way, which only comes when you have uh, written many of them. Yeah, I know, but that's the problem is sometimes the Rust way is unclear because no one's really done it yet. So you have to like fight your way into this. And when you have to refactor, you have to like really refactor your way back out, which can be very difficult, Right refactoring is i find it more frequent in my rust programs is it good is it bad not sure it's a skill issue it is a skill issue it just happens to be an amazingly difficult skill to get striving for perfection at the cost of progress here's the kicker with rust you're basically expected to write perfect code from the get-go that's not true at all i wrote several bugs in mine just recently in fact i wrote one that all my clients timed out because i'm a stupid idiot uh sounds great in theory but what if you are in a startup environment or any fast-paced development cycle you need to ship products fast to even see if they're worth refining if you spend all of your time wrestling with the borrow checker to produce perfect code you're a burning time, and time could have been used to do, uh, used to actually test your product in the market. Uh, most products are extremely simple. Most things you're solving that you're doing aren't complicated. I kind of doubt with this in general. I think that most people that are really familiar with Axum, with the database, with testing, can produce pretty much equal. Uh, honestly, they can produce like equally good stuff in about the same time. I've seen some people that can move very, very fast. If you're really familiar with the uh, product, you can move pretty dang fast. Um, it's just most people aren't that familiar.
You know what I mean? It's called MVP. You can use Python for it. Yeah, you can also use Python. You can use JavaScript. I don't think there's anything wrong with saying you should use. If it's an MVP, you can really use any language you want. Just use the language that you're the literal fastest with. If your only care is to get something out the door, just honestly use the language you're the fastest with. If you love PHP, go nuts with Laravel. Invite Taylor Otwell over for dinner. Have a fine glass of wine. Laugh a little bit and write your product in PHP. Nobody's going to care, right? Uh, Cobalt, go for it. Uh, Time is money and compilers don't pay bills. Here's the harsh truth. Your boss doesn't care about the theoretical benefits of zero cost abstractions if it takes twice as long to ship the product. With languages like C++ and C Sharp, you spend less time fighting the language and more time writing the code that does stuff people actually pay for. C++ and C Sharp have a rich standard libraries and frameworks that uh, let you stand on the shoulders of giants. Rust, not so much. Rust does actually have some really great frameworks, right? You got a solid-like implementation that you can SSR and do templates with, with uh, such as uh, what's it called, Leptos. It has quite a few different templating libraries. Um, it has really amazing handlers. Like, again, it, this just sounds like familiarity, right? This is just fam- familiarity more than anything else. Productivity over perfection. Garbage collect- uh, collection in languages like C Sharp might be sneered at by hardcore system programmers, but guess what? It lets you move fast. I agree with this. It's easier to write a program, though you can be significantly less familiar with C Sharp and write a program faster, just like me with Go yesterday. I literally wrote this in 10 minutes to do a quick WebSocket test just to see how good I was at writing a bit of Go. 10 minutes in, never used the library, never used any of it. Boom, got it up and running. Super ultra simple. It is shocking how easy those things are. And in the business world, uh, often, let's see, speed often trumps perfection. In a tiny memory leak in a non-critical path is the cost of getting a product out six months faster. Most businesses will pay that price uh, gladly. Fair. Uh, But I doubt that that's the trade-off people are making here. Uh, ecosystem support. C++ and C Sharp have been around the block. They have massive user bases, extensive libraries, and a wealth of online resources. So I think this, I, I don't think anybody here would have a problem in some sense with this article if it was C Sharp. I think the thing that's really triggering people is the C++. You know, again, I, I've been harping on this phrase recently, which is, it takes a complex language to tackle the complexity of some problems, and therefore you'll write simpler code. A simple, simple languages make more com- you, your complexity is either in your language or in your application, right? I think that's the common phrase. I would just like to st- I would just like to state as a counterexample, C plus plus, perhaps one of the most complex languages ever, in which you can enjoy both the complexity of the language and a complex application all you would like together at the same time because that's what you get (laughs) it's gonna be very very difficult uh anyways they have massive user bases extensive library a wealth of online resources if you run into a problem chances are someone else has too and the solution is just as quick google search away rust is getting there but it's not at that level yet the it works factor but at the end of the day businesses care about solutions that work c plus plus and c sharp have a long track record for working well in a variety of domains from game development to web backends to embedded systems Rust might catch up one day, but for now, it's more of a gamble. Yeah, I mean, I get it for game development, absolutely. Embedded systems, it's getting pretty dang good, right? I used it, like, what, last year? And it worked with just all the hardware right out of the box with Arduino stuff. It was, like, pretty easy, you know? It was pretty dang easy. Rust isn't suitable for rapid development cycles where time to market is a priority. Sure, it has its benefits, blah, 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 blah. Um, None of this makes any sense. The whole C Sharp and then C++ thing. It's really, this is where it falls apart. If you're just saying use a garbage collected language to get your product out the door, I buy that argument, right? Java, Go, C Sharp, JavaScript, whatever your like fancy is for the garbage collected languages, if you just OCaml, right? If you use one of those, I think you'll, I think that argument makes a lot more sense, right? I think you could make a really strong argument there. But when you throw this in, I just don't, like, it doesn't make any sense at that point. Oh, camel, my camel, my camel, my camel. It just doesn't make any sense. There's so many hard things about C Sharp. I mean, like, or C++. Like, how many ways now, how many different R and L value combinations of assigning mem copy uh, on assignment versus move semantics versus, I mean, how many constructors do you need to have these days? Is there six separate constructors these days? I know there was, like, the rule of four. Now, is it has it has it grown? I swear I saw something that's like, now there's six constructors. Zero or six. 
The rule of five. Dang it. Is it five? It's rule of five. Dang it. Okay, I was wrong. See, that's, I mean, that's how little I know about C++. I mean, I've, I've always done it. I just haven't done a lot of it. I'm going to give my verdict on this. Should you use a garbage collected or non-garbage collected language? In all reality, I don't really care what you use. Long as if you're going for speed, just use what you're familiar with. Use what you're you're the best at. Because honestly, you're going to be the best at that thing. And it's going to be, it, you're just going to do well. If you really are not sure, you've done a lot of dabbling through a bunch of languages. And you're really not sure which one you want to choose. I'm still, I'm still convinced that Go is just really effing simple to get off the ground. Every time I use it, I go, ugh, this if error equals nil business. I hate it. But then I program something, and I get it done pretty quick, and I'm pretty much mostly correct off the rip, and I go, gosh, okay, it was pretty easy to do. Damn it, it was really easy to do, but man, I don't love the language, right? It's just boring. I don't want it. I want, I want, to just, I want these complexities. I want these type systems that are incredible. I want all that. And then I still just get stuff done and go, and then I sit there and think, Am I the unreasonable one? Am I the asshole? Right? Am I the asshole? I might just be the asshole. Just refusing to use something because I'm like, it's boring. Gosh, this is boring. Like, I don't like writing Go. I do not like writing Go. Yet, it's just so easy. Every time. I just hate it. <laughs> like, all you need to know is channels and how to start a Go Funk. And you pretty much know almost everything about go it's shocking it's primitive of course it's primitive and it's primitive to its own fault i don't love it for that reason i find myself doing boring things i don't want to do right i wish their standard library was more complete it's becoming way more complete since they introduced generics but still it's kind of boring uh broad channels are just, dude channels are amazing in go channels in go are tremendously better because they have syntax support right if rust had syntax support on channels it still would be a pain in the ass because you need this left and right hand side, right? And so that's what kind of a big pain in the ass. Whereas Go, like you just don't need to do that. There is no left and right. Like you just have a channel and you either push it in or you pull it out. And like, that's that. That's great. It's unnecessary laborious. I know so is every other language. When you're doing stuff with Java, JavaScript, you're still doing a bunch of pretty mediocre string operations. You know what I mean? It's like, when you're doing string stuff in JavaScript, you're just like, I mean, it's still really annoying to do it. It's not like it's somehow way easier. Don't bring up JS in this. Uh, Go is easy to start with, but it has a lot of footgums. I work professionally with Go, and there are so many rough edges that you have to be aware of. Books like 100 Mistakes in Go are a mandatory reading, in my opinion. Ooh, interesting. I like to read that. So, yeah, easy to start with, but it has a lot of hidden footguns. Okay, yeah. Yeah, I haven't worked any. I've only worked in small or medium-sized Go projects. I've never worked in, like, a large one. When I say large, I mean... 25,000 plus lines, right? 25,000 plus lines, you could convince me that that's a large project, right? I, I have looked at your uh, chat history. I'm sorry, but you just, you're harping on C++ 14, 17, 20, 23. I see what you're saying. It's just not compelling, okay? I'm not gonna read it. I'm sorry. I do read your chat. It's just not worthy to be read out loud. And now you're making me do it here, okay? Sorry. Um, no, that's like ultra large. That's uber large. Okay, that's uber large. There's very few projects that are, you know, in the, t uh, yeah, that was great. Sorry, I'm sorry. I tried, I tried to be polite about it. I wasn't trying to dog on you. I do, I do read. I do read your chat. I just don't think it's all great to be said. <laughs> the name is, did you like it? Subscribe a chat. <laughs>